Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. Today, I talk to someone that is in Maryland who is an artist, uh, also worked in interior design for a while, uh, did, uh, oh, what was it? There was marketable design, we, a story about working for Discovery Channel stores, then started a tattoo shop, uh, an all-female tattoo shop, uh, all in a period of several years. And just, it's a great story. This person signed up, uh, I sent a call out through my email list, and the person signed up that she did it because she likes, or she needs to do more things where she is uncomfortable and scared. And I love that because there's literally nothing to be scared about talking to me. If anything, I'm more afraid of meeting people. It, it's so, that works. That dynamic works. So we talk about that. We have a lot of the same interests. And there's also an app that she uses called Sketchy that she discovered over the pandemic that really helped her kind of expand on the portraits and drawings and things that she does. And even we talk about how through the app, there's a class where someone taught how to make ink out of different household items and things that you find outside. Fascinating conversation. Also, don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to the show already, go to TomRay'sWebsite.com and you can check out the show. You can see my daily web comic. That's about my daily life. Makes sense. And also, I have a vlog there where I talk about the things I do throughout the day, like collect pop culture, books and toys and things from the 50s through the 90s. So go to Tom Ray's website. Dot com and you can see all that stuff there. Subscribe to the podcast. Check out this episode. Wait, you're watching this episode. That's not how this works. Anyway, here is my episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast starting right now. Shannon Wang. I am co-owner of Shop 53 in La Plata, Maryland, and I am an illustrator and painter. So you're in Maryland? I am. Yep. Southern Maryland, uh, about 20-ish miles from D.C. From D.C. Okay. I was That was going to be my next thing is like I'm horrible with directions or with geography. I can name all the states because of, I want to say it's that song in the musical, the song uh, Grand Old Flag, and in the extended version, they list off all the states by alphabetical, alphabetical order. So I know exactly. them that way, but if I had to show you where they are, no clue. Um, yeah, I'd be really bad at that myself, actually. <laughs> so it, it, now, have you always lived there, or did you move there? Like, are you a, are you a Maryland lifer? I am a Maryland lifer. Okay. I am technically a Waldorf fan. Uh, Waldorf, uh, Maryland is where I grew up, um, but now I'm just south of that. So, okay, I'm in Welcome, cute little town of Welcome, Maryland. That is the name is adorable in itself. <laughs> That's amazing, <laughs> Welcome, Maryland. I know I'm in the cutest little house in Welcome, Maryland. It's oh. adorable. Was the place built by like a tourist committee or something? I mean, that's like the most perfect thing. <laughs> you would think there would be more things happening here than there are. It's there's nothing here except houses and a little bar, convenience store, diner thing in like one building. But if you remember shows like uh, like Northern Exposure, like those were some of the best, like most artistic hubs that, you know, that all that had was the bar slash diner and then the little radio station. And, it, you know, and every it was a very artistic and creative community. Would you say that that's like, what is the artistic community like there? Well, I'll speak more about La Plata, which is where the shop is, okay. and that is that does have a very growing like art scene. Um, we're in the middle of trying to make it a arts and entertainment district, and with that comes a lot of um, opportunities to share art, make art, um, get money for you know projects, stuff like that. So it's definitely growing in La Plata, which is about six miles from me. So. Okay, like what kind of things were you? So actually, this this intrigues me. Now, first of all, how involved are you with it? Like, are you on a committee, like, or are you just supporting it, or how how are you involved with it? Oh, I'm um, all the things. Okay, <laughs> okay. I'm I'm in it. I'm supporting it. I'm um. There's many committees um, as far as La Plata goes for 
for arts. Um, we became the first bird city in Maryland, and so I was part of that. Bird <laughs> and, city? Yeah, there's like Bird City USA, and each um, – I didn't uh, – I wasn't involved with it in the infancy part of us becoming one, but we were the first bird city in, in Maryland, so that was kind of exciting. What does that mean? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it means that we do things to promote um, local birds, like the the oh, really? birds that are that are here. That we have plants and trees and and things to help them thrive. Okay, so it, okay, I I didn't want to assume that it sounded what it sounded like, and and yeah. okay, because I hate when I do that and it's just like oh I had it completely wrong. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay so you're so you're involved in doing that kind of stuff now. Um, I guess my first question is now and this is why it intrigues me. So before this time last year or no, mm -hmm. around this time last year, what were, what was, what was the committee doing? And I, and I kind of want to work up to like, what does it do now? Like, how are you trying to fix things now? So start with what it was doing before. Uh, obviously now you have to kind of adjust. Yeah. So we're still like in the process of making it happen for the town to become an arts and entertainment district. So this time last year, we were beginning to um, work on the application, and by we, I mean like there's a lot more work that's being done by uh, official La Plata town people that are involved. Um, but there's an intent to apply application, which is a very lengthy um, process. Mm -hmm. And then um, we had hoped to have our application in, which is even more so an extremely long process. Uh, by the end of last year, which they thought was, um, you know, pretty uh, aggressive for us if we had gotten it done by last year, by the end of last year. But, um, you know, COVID just kind of just stopped everything. So, yeah. um, so the intent to apply is still happening. And so I'm looking forward to that. Um, I've seen other towns around become the uh, an arts and entertainment district and they just seem to kind of have a lot more opportunities and it just seems to be a little bit more of a destination, especially for, you know, artsy people, you know, like myself. So, yeah. And, and yeah. what were some of the things that you did to adapt to, I mean, clearly the arts district meant like going out to it and uh, selling it publicly and, you know, uh, seeing things. So w what was, what was some of the adjustment that's happened in the community after this? Yeah, I mean, recently we have um, created a arts work group. So we have been uh, picking out spots in town that would be, hey, that would be great for a mural, or hey, we this would be awesome to have a sculpture here, yeah. stuff like that. So we can kind of get things rolling and have projects, you know, in the works, or even get um, calls out. So when we are there, that we're kind of ready to ready to roll. So right. okay, yeah. And uh, the, yeah, the public art thing really has not that it wasn't there before, but now it's the it's the thing that is definitely uh, you notice it more because there's not much more else going on. <laughs> it's, it's, so I'm sure there there is more of it, but uh, than there was before. But it was it did exist before. So I don't want to belittle the public art that was happening before this all happened. But it really is an opportunity for people that didn't used to be involved in public mm -hmm. art. Uh, I know a lot of people that now are. Um, and then also you, uh, you mentioned before you you have the tattoo business. Yes. How, so how did that adjust? <laughs> you know, and I want to get more into like how you became a tattoo artist and all that kind of stuff as well. But the, the business part is just so important because now with the new year and uh, with winter, you notice so much more in winter, how it's just like, there's nothing to do. Um, mm -hmm. but anyway, how did the, how did the uh, tattoo business first adjust and, and, evolve in in this whole thing <laughs> yeah i mean it was it was bonkers i mean um we shut down a couple days before maryland shut down uh that was like march 13th it was yeah. friday the 13th actually because we have a oh, right. flash big flash day like friday the 13th in tattoo world is is a big day you know yeah. for and stuff so we said so we didn't want all these people in here so we'll close down and see what happens and then we were shut down um which I thought would be, you know, a few weeks or something. You know, they say to quarantine for a couple of weeks. I and kind of felt that way too. Like I felt like yeah. it was just a thing where like, okay, this uh, people are sick. It needs to pass like not to this scale. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Like it won't be that long. And then 
I was like, holy crap, but you know, how long is this going to last? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, we were shut down for just shy of three months. Um, and ever since then, I mean, luckily we've had people, um, you know, waiting to get in. So well, that's great. Um, yeah, it, it's awesome. So yeah, I'm super, super happy that people trust us that we're doing the right things. Um, you know, as far as protocols and stuff, not much has changed except wearing masks and things because we wiped everything down as right. if there was a pandemic anyways, you know, so yeah. not much changed that, but yeah, it's been, it's been interesting. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, there are a lot of services that I feel were, the only one that I'm leery of is eating in public. Anything else it's like, okay, you know, it's people aren't really approaching you or touching anything uh, or I don't know. It, for some reason, just eating in public still seems very vulnerable to me. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I, lots of other things. I'm like, okay, there are ways to protect yourself. I don't know, but that's just me. And I don't need to go into that. That's my own. I don't, I don't need to start going through my own, <laughs> my own personal <laughs> paranoias. Um, yeah. but it, now with that tattoo shop, so tell me about this tattoo shop. It is in, uh, on the website, it says that it is an all, uh, women run tattoo shop. How did it start? It started with, um, me and uh, who is now my wife Mona she was in a another tattoo shop in the area and um, just wanted to make a change and I had always wanted to um, start a business number one but also have something that was art related I, I thought maybe um, you know uh, art in in a in a bar you know it was like a gallery slash bar thing or you know, I don't know. I was just trying like to come own up with a bar. Them. You wanted to own a bar and then have art in it. Yeah. For a minute. Yeah. I dig that. Okay. Yeah. I know what you're yeah. saying. You'd probably be into it. It was like a whole, it was going to be a whole like retro board game kind of, um, oh, thing. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's probably good because I, I would have been up too late and I probably would have become an alcoholic. And so it was just no good. No good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, she wanted to make a change, and it was like um, tattoos and, um, you know, art on your skin and art on your walls totally makes sense. So um, we just decided to take the plunge and, and, and start up. Yeah. Um, at the time, it was just me and her, and we had one other girl lined up, and that was it. And now there are six of us there. Okay. Which is pretty amazing. So. How long ago was that, did you say? Uh, it was just, uh, it'll be five years in May. Wow. That's fantastic. Wow. Yeah. And you had never run a business before. No. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> There's hope for us yet. <laughs> I love there that. Is hope for you yet. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I've kind of, uh, like all my previous work, um, situations I think have kind of led me to this. Uh, I worked for a contractor for a little while. I was supposed to be doing interior design and, things kind of took a turn and I ended up having to teach myself QuickBooks to help him stay afloat. And yeah. so I think, you know, partially that is partially just, you know, luck. And I don't know. It's, it's crazy how it worked out. Had you it's ever crazy. tattooed before? No. Okay. And so like who apprenticed you or like, how did that come yeah. about? Like <laughs> I kept, um, I kept going back and forth as to whether I would start to tattoo. Um, I have a super um, fear of needles, to be quite honest with you. I'm with you on that one. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I cannot go to the doctor. Like, it's just no. not cool. Uh -uh. It's not a good situation. So, um, yeah, I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to tattoo. Like, how could I possibly do that when I can't look at a shot going in my arm or uh -huh. anything like that? And, um but I'd always been into art, and so I thought, well, I don't know. After a long time, I thought, well, I'll try it. And Mona was the one who taught how to. And um, it's it's totally different mindset for some reason. I know it doesn't make sense to people that don't have this weird phobia, but tattooing and doctor's needles are completely different in my brain. <laughs> I want to say it's because it's a mechanism and makes a sound. Um, I could see that. Um, I don't want it done to me. Yeah. But... That, that's really cool. So, and you had mentioned the background of your, like you really are, uh, you are versed in many things that I've seen on your website and you said interior design and all that. So what is your back, like what, how did you start out artistically? Like what was your artistic background? 
Um, really, in school, um, from I mean, as early as I can remember, I was drawing. In high school, I was really, really into it. Um, my whole senior year was either being a teacher's aide to the few art teachers that we had, or taking art classes. Yeah. Um, I then went with a friend who was going to a very small art college in Maryland, and um, he took me for the day. You know, you could bring a friend or. I don't know. It was some kind of open oh, really? class situation. So That's cool. yeah. So I took, uh, you know, I took a class there, and it was a uh, my first model um, drawing from, and I really liked it. I really liked the school, and went there. Um, our graduating class, I think, was maybe ten people. It was very small. Huh. Not that it was, uh, you know, exclusive or expensive. It just was. It used to be an elementary school, and it was just very tiny. I don't, I don't know why it was so tiny, but, um, but yeah. And so from there I went into, um, visual merchandising. I was working for, uh, discovery channel stores. Wait, 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 uh, wait, wait, wait. So, so you went to, you went to art school and then you visual merchandising and then working for discovery channel. So or discovery channel stores. Yes. Yeah. It's kind what of a different. Is, yeah. Like what is visual merchandising and how did you go from one to the other? I mean, I'm assuming it's because you had, you now had the art background and can you just like apply it and go like, well, I have the artistic background and they go, great. You did the college years or how, yeah. how does that work? How, I know. I think I'm the poster child, honestly, for just being at the right place at the right time or okay. knowing the right person. Um, because I, I went from, College to uh, Pier 1 in Ports. I was doing visual merchandising there. The lady who was in charge of the region or something of visual merchandising, we became friendly. She was moving to Discovery Channel. They had uh, recruited her, and then she recruited me and from there. Is visual merchandising, again, is this one of those ones where like the name kind of describes it? Is it what I'm thinking of where you're just kind of setting up layouts, like display layouts? Or what is visual merchandising? Yes. Okay. You're exactly right. yes. Nice. I'm two for two today. I'm so happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Um, so from, but from um, Pier 1 Imports to Discovery Channel Store was a huge difference. Uh -huh. We worked at the store that was in downtown um, D.C. So it was like four levels. It was bonkers huge. We had um, huge windows. I think they were 16 feet wide windows that we would make these insane displays for, nice. you know, the crocodile hunter. We would carve out of styrofoam these, you know, so crocodiles. And you actually had to do them for the television series uh, that they had. Yeah, we would. Yeah. Our big promos were always linked to what the channel was doing. Okay. For sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that was, yeah, it was, it was crazy. Um, and then merchandise, like visual merchandising kind of took a, a hit after 9-11. Mm. Um, a lot of things, uh, for me anyways, that was kind of like the first cuts that people have to make. Like, do we really need a merchandiser? Like we could just print, you know, give pictures out and make the managers do themselves or, or whichever. Right. Um, so the lady that recruited me from Pier 1, uh, Cheryl, who is still one of my really good friends, um, she started doing um, interior design. And so I got, uh, I worked with her again, like doing our own job there. I worked for a firm in D.C. And um, so doing, you know, uh, merchandising into visual merchandising of homes, I don't know, it just all kind of... yeah meshed for me and I don't know. I could um, see that. Yeah. It's weird. Usually people kind of go to school for just one of those things. So I don't know. I kind of got a fast pass. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then during this time, what were you doing um, as far as your own personal art? Cause I know that you, and I see some of the drawings that I've seen uh, that you've posted. Uh, you do a lot of pencil, uh, pencil and portrait art. So you left college and you started going into this career that you didn't even study for. But what were you doing artistically, like in the meantime, was that kind of on the back burner? Were you doing anything on the side? Like what what was what was happening with your personal art at that time? Yeah, um, it's a good question because it, it was just nothing. Um, there was there was none, um, and a lot of reasons why I explain like why and how the shop fifty three came about was because I didn't have a place around town to hang up my work. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't want to paint a picture and then just hanging in my room or hanging in the, you know, house, or whatever. Right. So it just kind of seemed like 
just, I don't know, a waste. And <laughs> I, I don't know why. It was just like no outlets around uh, where I was. It was kind of pre, you know, it was pre, obviously pre Facebook, pre MySpace even. I mean, I'm aging myself, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, there were, there, I, I just didn't feel like where we lived, I had much of an outlet or a, a, a voice in art. So it kind of got stifled a little bit because. I didn't really have an outlet so much. Did, so, did you ever, uh, in saying that, w- that you felt where you lived, like had you ever thought about going to other places to try and do it, or was it that you wanted to make something work where you lived? Um, no, I hadn't. I guess just working, doing what I was doing, kind of fed that you know right brain yeah. mentality. Um, so what I wasn't doing on paper, I was kind of doing in a room in a house, you know, that type of thing. So right. I didn't really feel like I wasn't being creative. It was just kind of creative in a different way that I had been before. Okay. So, yeah. And then how did you get out of the interior design game? Cause you're clearly not doing that. And well, I mean, you are, you, you, yeah. you, you offer it as a service that you do personally, but you're not working for a creative design. Uh, I guess it was, w- would it have been a firm? I guess I don't know what, what the, what you were working for when you were doing it. Yeah, technic. I mean, we we I worked with um, you know Cheryl. She does it now in in North Carolina um, full time too. So um, yeah, it was just yeah we just kind of had our own little interior design business. So okay. I think a firm would like I don't know. I'd feel like we would have people. It just seems like the right thing to call it. Like I don't I don't want to say organization. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, technically, it probably was a firm, but I'm like eh, I don't know if it. You know, I mean, truthfully, my, my only, my only background on interior design that I know of is through television. So I have no idea what it's supposed to be called. That's the, my only knowledge of it, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, it was was crazy. It was a good time. We met a lot of cool people and a lot of, you know, uh, you know, weird furniture companies and, and weird wallpapers and stuff like that. So it was, it was super fun and getting out of it, um, I believe that Cheryl was moving to North Carolina and um, what happened? What did happen? I don't know. I I wasn't there. (laughs) (laughs) I was working for, I was working for a firm in DC and they were, they were um, shutting down. That's what it was. They were were shutting down. And so I called a, a contractor that we had had do work for us and um, then I started working for him. So then I learned more about construction and stuff like that. Oh, cool. And like I said, and I was supposed to be doing interior design for him. Um, but long story short, he had an office mishap. He was a very small um, company. And so I had to learn how to do QuickBooks and stuff like that to help him out. So. Which is handy. I put off doing stuff like that for the longest time. And now it's just like, ugh, you know, yeah. <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> 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 I just yeah. finally had to do it. So with that, you were drawing, uh, so you draw uh, portraits, very realistic portraits. Do you have people that you actually model them for? Or are you making them up in your head or um, a lot of the, a lot of the portrait designs that you do? Yeah, I have um, I have been drawing from um, there's an app called Sketchy that I found I guess uh, pretty close to um, the shutdown. Okay. And they are um, it's a it's an app that you can post pictures of your artwork. You can also post pictures of yourself to be um, drawn by other artists. Oh. Um, it's more about portraits than it is anything else on there, and that was always something that I had a hard time with. Um, they offer classes um, to learn how to draw. You know, you could take a whole class on learning how to draw an ear or a nose or eyes or whichever. So wow. I just kind of went all in on that on quarantine and was just drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing. <laughs> so if you look at my pictures kind of pre um March last year, you know, um before March, you know, twenty twenty, it you wouldn't see that many portraits at all. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. And and I'd like that this is, I'd never heard of this app. So there would be pictures where you'd be like, okay, I'm gonna draw that person. When you do it, does it just go draw this picture and then 
do you reply to it? Like, how do they know that you did a picture or did they ever even see it? Or I mean, I suppose you don't have to send it regardless. You're drawing a picture, but like, right. what's, what's the process of doing it? I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by this thing that, that occupied your time while, while you were stuck at home. Yeah, I, I talk about Sketchy so much. I feel like I should get some kind of royalty or something. I, t- I tell everybody about Sketchy. Really? It. Okay. So you can't, like, I'll just talk f- uh, about, like, myself. So I'll yeah. take a picture I'll take a picture of whatever, my dog or myself or Mona, whichever, and post it on there as an inspiration photo. And with posting it, you you claim that you're the owner of that that picture and then you're saying it's okay to put it on there and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So there is um, an inspiration tab, which you can see all of the pictures that people that are on Sketchy have posted, which basically they're saying, Hey, draw me in, in a sense, just by posting. Yeah. Um, they also uh, Sketchy picks from that pool of people submitting a, a daily inspiration photo. So they're like, Hey, we suggest you draw this one just for no reason whatsoever. And then you can see um, how other people have drawn that same photo. And then when you post a picture of an inspired photo that you've drawn, you can click that, um, you know, click one of the inspiration photos. I'm probably not saying it right, but you can save pictures that um, inspire you. And so that's on your inspiration tab. So, when you post a picture, like if I post a picture myself and then I drew myself, I could click the inspiration picture so I would know that somebody drew me or whatever. Huh. If that makes sense. It does. And I've seen people attempt to do this on their own like social media profiles, but I've never, and, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But, mm-hmm. or like, and by works, I mean sometimes people will interact with it. Um, mm-hmm but that's a hard thing to do on social media because it's just like looking at it. Oops. I kept scrolling. Now it's gone forever. You know, but this app uh, actually is you're there to do that. That's I'm amazed. I haven't heard of this yet. It, (laughs) it sounds like such a great artistic time waster. And I mean that in a good way. (laughs) Yeah. That's awesome. Um, You get to see, yeah. Like if you drew a picture that was inspired by a photo there, you can click on it and see, you know, uh, other people's styles and what they did and, um, yeah, just even do a search for, uh, you know, guys with beards or, you know, whatever, if yeah. you're looking for a specific kind of, uh, pose or picture or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fascinating. I had not heard of that. No, There's I- a guy from uh, Denmark, I believe who, who did a class on, um, homemade inks. So he would draw pictures that he made, um, you know, making uh, acorn ink and blueberry ink out of frozen blueberries. Did you try any of these? Like, did you try to make any of these? I did. Uh, okay, I tell so me about com- it. I want to hear about this experience. Yeah, so like the blueberry ink, I would have thought that there would have been more to do than just to make your own ink. But really, he was just proving that you don't need to go to an art store, especially during quarantine. You know, if you run out of supplies or something, you probably have them either in your fridge or in your backyard. So we had frozen blueberries and you, um, you defrost them and then freeze them, defrost them, freeze them a few different times. And then you get all this, you know, juice and you draw a picture with it. It's bonkers. That's it. Like it doesn't involve adding anything else to it. You can, which changes the color a little bit of it. But, um, yeah. And in addition to that, he draws like 90% of his drawings with sticks. Oh, fun. So I was like, what? This guy's bonkers. What? So how- yeah, all these, like um, this chick right here in the blue. Yeah. Yeah, that was um, with a, drawn with a stick. That was okay. my first stick drawing. What did you think of that? What? How was, how was your experience drawn with a stick? I love the fact that that sentence was just said. <laughs> <laughs> I was so pumped. I'm like running around being like, I drew this with a stick. <laughs> yeah, so he just takes a razor blade and sharpens just a twig. Huh. And then yeah. did you try making the acorn ink too? I heard you say that there was acorn ink, did, like, or did you just do the blueberry one? I made blueberry. I made um, I made walnut ink. How does that we, work? Work around here. Because you can't you, just freeze and unfreeze that one. No, you mash that one up, add some water, and then just boil it to death huh okay yeah 
I mean, and he's, I know they said you could do this with stuff in your fridge, but now I need to figure out how to do that with beer and cheese. Yeah. <laughs> coffee. Oh, uh, that's true. Coffee. I got enough of that. Yeah. It's, but it coffee, coffee, I mean, that's, that's just all I got to do is make the coffee and then draw with it. That doesn't yeah. seem as impressive as the process that you, you went through for yours. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I suppose I could draw the coffee with a stick. Yeah. <laughs> it would be extra, you know. That's true. I have not experimented with different drawing tools in a while. That's, that's an interesting thought. So what was, what, what did it change for you when you were doing that? Like how, how did it feel different? And like, did it, did it spark any other inspiration or anything? Um, I mean, it did. I, I obviously would have never thought to even attempt to do, uh, something with the homemade ink or, uh, I wasn't really drawn to ink so much, um, in the first place. So that was, that was fun and yeah. not drawing, um, ahead of time, just kind of going at it first with a stick and some ink, uh, was new for me as well. So it kind of freed my brain up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. And now with these drawings, you, you make them and put them in the, the studio or is it a studio or what do you call it? A tattoo shop or a parlor? Like, what do you call it? Yeah. We call it a shop, a studio, okay. whichever. Yeah. Okay. So you put them up in the shop. Now, is this, is this the main place where you've been, uh, putting your stuff or do you, are you selling them online? I know that you, you show your work on your website, which mm -hmm. kudos to you for having the personal website and showing your artwork and all that kind of stuff and keeping it up to date. That's that on top of it. Plus running a business is a huge task, like, like maintaining that stuff. So nice work. Is it, and, is. Thank now, you. <laughs> and now I'm curious, like, what kind of stuff do you do with them? Do you offer them for sale? Like, are you doing anything? Not that you need to, I mean, you're running your own business, but I'm curious, like what you're doing with your art or if it's just uh, more for display. Yeah. Well, for me, it's, it's been more for display, but I have gotten a bunch of commissions um, hmm. from them, um, both for people portraits, pet portraits, um, things of that nature. So really besides websites, um, and Instagram and Facebook, I don't really show it so much. Um, the shops gallery space is, um, really for all types of artists, not just for me. I might have one piece per show. Um, but that, that's it. I haven't had like a, a solo show or anything like that. Okay. I don't, it's not about me. So, well, so. and who are some of the artists that you have in there and what, how do you find them? Uh, we find them through calls for art online for, through social media. So um, right now we're doing more virtual shows because we can't have big opening parties, um, which has actually been um, pretty fun. We've had uh, submissions from Japan and Tennessee and oh, cool. Canada. And so artwork that, um, we never would have seen before. Um, right. So that's that's pretty awesome, which I think is going to stick uh, in future shows. Um, we have themed shows at the shop. So about every three to four months, we change the theme so that artists have a direction, but we aren't pinholing them into, um, you know, a very tiny box, but we're at least giving them a you know, a nudge of, of something instead of, Hey, draw something. And you're like, oh, I don't know. What do you want me to draw? I don't <laughs> so I'm always better with like a little bit of it, like give me something to gnaw on, you know, to draw. So. Yeah. How do you run your virtual shows with, with everybody now trying to find ways to work online? That's the most difficult part is like, how do you do it? Because we all know how to do it publicly. You know, we all know how to, you put stuff in a room and you lay it out nicely. I mean, clearly that's your background, but how do you transfer that to, uh, visually online and managing that? Like what, what's the process for a virtual show? Well, it's, it's definitely not as fun. I'll tell you that <laughs> we've, had, we've had in the past, um, pretty good size parties. I mean, the shop is jam packed with people. Yeah. Um, we sometimes have live music. Uh, the lady down the street makes cookies that are themed to the show. Um, you know, it, it, it's a good time. So that is impossible to kind of bottle and put online. Um, so it's basically just a an online kind of portfolio with sizes and prices and stuff like that. We still do themes, um, and we're just kind of showing everything that that came in. So. Um, we don't have to be too specific uh, because we only have so much space 
at the shop that when we have in person, sometimes we can't take all the submissions because we just don't have the room for it. But um, you know, online we can just pile it on. So. And are you live streaming it or are you taking photos and putting it on a website? Like what's the process for how people interact with it? Yeah. And our website for the shop, um, there is a gallery like drop down page. And okay. so you can see, um, the recent call for art, what's hanging either in the shop or virtually now. And then you can look at posts, um, shows as well. Okay. To kind of see different themes and see what you missed. So. Okay. And so that when you said that someone from Japan had submitted art, like they sent it to you and you have it there. No, we just have it. Um, we have a high res picture of it and all the information. Gotcha. And if it sells, then they would ship it to the person that, that bought it. Okay. Yeah. I like that. That's so that is as if it, it's using the concept of the web as the store and instead of them having to send it to you, you're going, this is our virtual store. Mm -hmm. Their stuff is connected. See, that's the beauty of, uh, I hate, I keep saying that's the beauty of what happened from all this. It seems, but I, I want to spin a positive on it the, from There's what happened. Yeah. It's, it's the fact that there are, I, I feel like online, there are so many people I know who are like, I need to get to that eventually. And, you know, and now it's like, everybody's been forced into it, which it's tough. And yeah. it's not easy. And it is a different way of thinking. Like, like I was saying, it's not just in arrange the chairs, hang this in place here. This is where people are going to look at it. It's, it isn't that there's no, like right now, right. I mean, I, my place is a mess, but you can only see this much. Um, right. <laughs> but it's the, it's the connection. And also the fact like with me talking to you right now, you know, yeah. that's, that's the beauty of all this. And that's what I, that's what I do love about this. And I, that's, that's the one positive I want to spin out of all of this. And it's given everybody the opportunity to really find more exposure and more people. And I think that's super cool that you guys are doing that. When did you start? When was the first one that you did? Um, that is a good question. Um, we would have had one in, um, so every time we open up a show, we, the next day, or the next weekend, we say what the next call for art is. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine it would have been um, June probably that we had our okay. first one. We had already had a call out. And so I was like, oh, well, instead of having people drop stuff off, we'll just get pictures and, and yeah. post it up. It's, you know, the show still must go on somehow, some way. <laughs> okay. And when people purchase this stuff, how are, I guess, how this is another one that's really tough too. How are you connecting the the artwork with the people who are purchasing it? Like, do you have a cart that you're handling yourself? Are you embedding their button to it? Like when you sell the stuff, how do you, how do you manage that? That, that is probably one of the most difficult things to do is to actually manage a cart. Especially right, with right. multiple people. Yeah. So what, what's your method for that? Yeah. So, um, it's been fairly easy. Um, just following up, you know, you just got to stay on top of emails. If something's purchased, then you just email them and say, Hey, this got sold and here's their information and, and, and go at it. And then we just send them a check and, and that, and that okay. work. Yeah. yeah. You make it sound so easy. <laughs> it's like, and that's all it is. Fine. <laughs> don't oh, tell no. me. No, I'm it's just magic kidding. of Squarespace website. I don't know how yeah. maybe. <laughs> no, that's great. I, I'm glad. And, and no, I'm happy that it's that easy. I mean, that's, that's the thing is I think uh, what makes people most afraid is that it's going to be this really difficult thing to manage. And there's so many businesses that are built around making it easier for people that it's, it, you just got to kind of try it and trial and error and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, We've had a few years to warm up to it too. I mean, uh, the the show would stay up for the entirety of the show. So when people bought things, we still had to keep track of who bought what and you know who do we owe this to and that to. So um, in this sense, it's a little bit easier to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, all virtual. Yeah. Okay. That side of it, the business side of it, anyways, is a little easier. So how are things going for the shop these days? It's awesome. I mean, people really love that it's an all-female shop. We we hear it all the time, um, and we have a lot of people waiting. Um, you know, I thought that with um, you know people still partially being in quarantine and just everything going on, that we wouldn't be as busy as as we are. Um, I do get a lot of like um, reschedules and cancellations because of COVID. Um, Understandable. You know, 
which, yeah, um, somebody calls that day and is like, oh, I woke up and didn't feel good. And we're like, yep, no problem. Exactly. <laughs> we will reschedule not going to go you. like, no, get yourself in here. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. We're like, that's totally fine. So um, while we have quite a, um, quite a list of people that are trying to get in, it's also hard to fill all the spaces when at the last minute we get uh, a cancellation because of COVID. Um, so that's the only uh, tricky part and you know downside of what's happening right now for us, luckily, um, right now. Yeah. yeah. And it started out with just the two of you. How did it expand into how many people you got now? You have like five, six? Six, yes. Wow. Six. How did the, how did it expand? Um, we were um, right when we uh, signed the lease and stuff. We did have one other girl um, ready to to start, and then um, friends and just uh, we were able to uh, start off the shop with three rooms. So they're all it's not an open space. Uh, each artist has their their own room, um, pretty much. Uh, me and another girl do share a room, but it's very big. Um, and the business, we're in like a small, I, w- I don't want to say strip mall because it's, it's, it's cute, tiny little, but we have, anyways. Let's say there's building. A big, it's a building. Yeah. <laughs> so part of that building um, became available after two years or so. So we were able to get um, two more rooms and, just again put a call out we asked for um artists there's a there's someone on instagram that helps you if uh, a tattoo shop is hiring or looking for um looking for a um what the heck is the word like a sit-in artist a a visiting artist Uh, there's there's a lot of tattoo artists that kind of jump around and they they visit and travel and and do they might have yeah i guess i didn't know that i mean it makes sense i get i get that when you hear it, it's like, oh, totally. Why wouldn't there be? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Guest artist. Oh, it's okay. Yep. As a guest artist. Right. Um, yeah, so we've had uh, two girls uh, guest artists from California. Um, we did have one guy in the shop from West Virginia uh, for a weekend. And it's fun because um, the one girl from California has actually stayed for about a year and a half. So we're, we're slowly, like, digging our claws in <laughs> to... <laughs> stay because we love her um but it's so interesting to have new techniques and new styles and new people um come through you know obviously that hasn't happened in a while but um but that's super super fun you know to do that too i think it's really cool too that basically your job now is um pretty much drawing every day (laughs) i dig it i dig it i don't think i'm working ever uh ever it doesn't feel like work yeah Yeah. Which that's maybe right. And that's, that's the saying it's, uh, which I'm not going to quote because now that I'm thinking of it, I'm probably going to misquote it. The whole, like you never work a day in your life or whatever. You know what, one I'm talking about is what I'm saying. Everybody's heard it. What are the plans for the, for the shop in the, in the future, like throughout this year? Do you, have you guys been thinking ahead or you're just kind of riding it or what? For now, um, writing it, um, I'm going to continue to just keep drawing and, and, you know, putting my stuff out there. Um, and more and more we get involved with the community with different things that are going on. And that's, that's always super happy. Um, we're hoping to have a little bit of a celebration for our five year anniversary. So, um, we'll see how that works. When is that anniversary again? It's, uh, May 13th. Okay. Oh, it was Mm -hmm. actually on the 13th. So that, that, uh, thing that you, that promotion you were doing last year was actually going to be on your fourth anniversary that turned out to be on the Friday, the 13th. Oh, that was, uh, March. It oh, was, that March, was March. Oh, that was March. The other. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. I need to stop messing up March and May. Both of my kids' birthdays are in March and May and I will oh, yeah. confuse the two just because they start with M. I don't know why <laughs> I stopped thinking of what the month's name is after I think of the first letter. I need to stop doing that. Anyway, that's, that's not important. Uh, <laughs> and then what are your plans for your artwork going forward? And not that you're not already doing it, like we just said, but like with the drawing and you've been doing the sketching and kind of expanding the different things you're experimenting with, are there any things that you're kind of thinking of doing in the future just for your own personal artwork? Well, um, I've been, um, we're trying to work on some murals around town. Um, oh, so cool. I do have one. I do have one that was approved, um, you know, pre-COVID that I need to do for a bakery. What is it? Uh, 
It is, uh, it's probably like 10 feet by 8 feet, and it's going to be like a window into their shop. So it's uh, a big cement block wall right now, so it'll just be affixed to the wall to make it look like it's a big window, and you can see. Oh, neat. Okay. Cakes and cakes and stuff like that, so. Well, that's fun. Yeah, so I need to do that. Um, I'm collaborating with um, a local brewery and doing a uh, beer can design for them. How are so, I know so many people are doing this. How do I do this? <laughs> How did you get involved with that? I'm I'll sorry. You, that was, I got a little overexcited. <laughs> no, it's, I know so many people that are doing the beer can thing, and I, I'm, I'm so jealous of that. Not, not that I would know what in the world I would do anyway. So tell me about this beer can design. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. I did one last year, and I was like, oh, my God. I, I mean, I'm yeah, so that's super cool. cool. It's so fun to have like a thing in your hand that you made, and um, it was awesome. Uh, even though when I first saw it in real life on the can, I went to the brewery, and the first time I saw it was when we got out of the truck, and I looked down on the ground, and it was smashed. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only the only artwork you make that's going to be destroyed when it's done. <laughs> exactly. I was like, wow, this looks great. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> that never occurred to me. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, it, it was kind of a bummer, but... Um, yeah, so this one um, is is super cool because uh, we only have one brewery in Waldorf, Maryland, and so they're super small. And they teamed up with Charles County um, Tourism Group. Really? So they okay. promote different like landscape areas, parks and rec. Um, they're very good about helping out small businesses um, as far as like making. Uh, they have a interactive website that tells you different places to go if you're interested in, you know, this culture, or this food, or this, that. Um, and someone in the uh, Charles County Department of Tourism knew about me just doing artwork and said, oh, you should talk to Shannon. And when the brewery put out a call or something for it, I was like, yeah, I'm totally down to do this. Yeah. And um, either I was the only one, which is probably the case, or I was the first one. I'm not really sure. Come on. I'm <laughs> sure that not. you were just picked because of what you do. <laughs> well, they're, they're, we're doing it. So, uh, so I'm yeah, super exactly. Pumped. Yeah. I'm pumped. And, um, yeah, it's about, um, a local landmark here that, you know, they're like, um, you know, just promoting the fact that it's there and, and stuff like that. So, yeah. It's pretty neat. When you do these, are you working in pencil or are you working digitally? Like what, what's your, which back or which type of artwork are you putting out there? Like graphic design or illustrated design or. Uh, it's illustrative. It's on um, procreate on the iPad. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Which is, yeah, it's been a game changer for me. So if anyone's thinking about getting an iPad or getting procreate, like they should just do it right now. Yeah. It's pretty nifty <laughs> drawing, drawing on a tablet. I, I mean, I still think that drawing on paper is definitely going to be easier, but it's just, there's so much more you can do when you're drawing digitally or at least on a tablet. It was, it changed a lot. I've, I've had the same conversation with many people that, yeah. that yeah. they put it off and it's just like, that's not real art. And it's just like, Oh man, I can do so many things here. <laughs> the, the undo alone, the undo button alone is worth the entire price of investment. Yeah, um, I'm a sketchbook. I'm like double tap. Like, what is, is not working? <laughs> so, what was the design that you did for the can? Uh, when is this coming out? I don't know if I can say. Uh, probably in like a month. Well, you could tell me about the previous one. The previous one was um, they wanted just a mosaic design, so it was just um, you know just different colors and and triangle shapes and things like that. So that was fun. Um, the thing I think I can talk about the new one. The new one. The new one is promoting um, Mallows Bay, which is a super cool place around here. Where I hope I don't say this wrong, but there are ships from World War One, I, I believe, that okay. a president had brought there and just set on fire. We we didn't need them anymore. Blah blah blah. So there's all these ships. That's pretty and, punk rock um, right there. <laughs> We're just yeah. set these, <laughs> just got some extra ships. Why don't we just burn this? No, it's barbecue. <laughs> That's pretty so awesome. So now um, what's left of these ships has become a huge part of the, the ecosystem there. Um, you can see some of the structures still up on like three or four of the ships. But if you Google Earth Mallows Bay, it's, it's pretty awesome looking. You can see the outlines of 
all the big ships um, under underwater. It's it's really pretty cool. Oh. Also, I keep meaning to ask, how did you come up with the name for the tattoo shop? <laughs> That's a super lame. Like there, there really is. I mean, we went through, <laughs> we went through so many different names, and we would tell our friends, you know, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And they were like, mm, it sounds like a calligraphy store. Uh-huh. Or oh, what are you selling? Like stationery there? And we were like, no. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> We kind of we had a vision of what we wanted the shop to look like, kind of industrial woods stuff like that, but still be, be warm and inviting. Um, we had rusty numbers three and a five, and I don't know, we just called it Shop Fifty Three. Okay, so it was inspired by the picture of those numbers that were in your shop. We had we had those numbers in our apartment. Okay, it was called Shop Fifty Three. We have the numbers; they're going to hang in the shop, so it was done. It's not that lame of a story. It's, it's there's connection there. I mean, you had them, and you're like, no, we'll just do that because everybody hates yeah. the other names. <laughs> we try and make a connection. We have like a um, a trunk from a VW that's painted like Herbie the Love Bug uh, in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> nice. um, but yeah, it's just uh, just numbers and yeah. Okay, and then. Uh, and then one last thing I want to ask, um, is there anything else that you'd like to mention or anything that you have coming up or just anything in general you'd like to uh, talk about before we finish up today? Oh, man. Well, I just want to thank you so much for this opportunity. I mean, one of the things that I have um, started doing is things that scare me. So um, when you put the call out, I was like, oh, that scares me. I should probably do that. Nice. You know? um, so so thank you very much. And um yeah, if anyone's um, in the Virginia, D.C., um, Pennsylvania, Maryland area that wants to show off their work, um, you know, follow us on Instagram, Shop 53 Tattoo Studio. We're always looking for um, all types of artists. And, um, yeah, I'm just super thankful for the, for the opportunity. Well, I'm thankful for you talking to me today. I love, the, I love getting to meet all these people, so this has been great. 